Okay, so you you probably have several questions. Um, so uh, I yes, this is an actual video game. No, it wasn't made by a group of eight-year-olds. It was published by LucasArts. What? Out of all the video games I've ever played, owned, rented, or heard about, there is one title that for the last 15 years has been the most bizarre, obscure, and hilarious of them all. I'm talking about Armed and Dangerous for the original Xbox. When I say obscure, I mean it. This is all the information on its Wikipedia page. The team that made it consisted of 10 people, and the studio itself, well, you all know Planet Moon Studios, right? No. Known for their renowned hits such as, uh, Smarty Pants for the Wii, Battle of the Bands, Brain Quest Grades 3 and 4, <laughs> and the all-time slapper Brain Quests Grade 5 and 6. So, the studio is virtually unknown. Their history of games unremarkable, and they shut down operation in 2011. I could also not find a single video on YouTube on or about this game with over 100,000 views. It had five reviews on Metacritic in the last 13 years. I'm not just saying this to be a hipster, because the truth is, I love this game. So you know what I thought? I'm done keeping this secret. I'm gonna share this blessing with the rest of you. Strap yourselves in because we're going for a ride. But before we get into Armed and Dangerous... War. War never changes. I was there, you know, on Omaha Beach. I commanded tanks. I sent men to their deaths. I remember it all. We tried to build defenses, but they couldn't hold. After the sound of gunfire and the ringing stopped, I heard a familiar voice. Mission failed. We'll go next time. Let me tell you something. No man, no general, wants to hear those words. Do you get what I'm saying? You have to install Warpath. You must finish what I started. Don't you see? It's a World War II RTS game for mobile devices. Using the link on screen, you'll not only support the channel, but gain special rewards. Warpath delivers an authentic World War II experience. I know, because I was there. With high quality models for all the weapons, tanks, and units, experience the classic battles of the past, as I did in the PvE mode. Even the terrain is made to match the feel and landscapes of these historic locations. Maximize your actions per minute by giving units individual tactics. Enjoy a unique battle experience with detailed and clean presentation. And no, it's not pay to win. You can't win wars with money, only strategy. So what are you waiting for, soldier? Your mommy to tuck you in? Download Warpath for free using the link on screen and in the description. And now, on with Armed and Dangerous. Let the sound of my voice calm your nerves, for you are home now. Now, I know what you're thinking. Holy God, these cutscenes look disgusting. I mean, ew! What is that? Are those teeth? I've seen better animation and lip syncing from Hunt Down the Freeman. You uh, fucked up uh, my face. It's a trap! Literally, the characters' mouths are just flaps that move up and down. But trust me, underneath all its terrifying graphics and technical problems is a game worth experiencing. So it starts out with a description of the Book of Rule, an ancient artifact with tremendous power capable of leveling cities and turning its inhabitants into trees. Three people are walking through a blizzard. These are the Lionhearts, a group of wanted thieves who set out to find Rexus, a blind seer, and pull the ultimate heist to steal the Book of Rule from the evil King Forge. Now, the manual, yeah, games used to have those back in the day. But unless you read this, you are not gonna have any context or explanation for anything. And it's also completely nonsensical. Bah! 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 Bro, that's enough. Bah! It's basically a parody satire of various action and fantasy tropes. It's very Monty Python-esque in its humor. 
The first cutscene establishes our characters, Roman's the leader, the straight man, Jonesy an irritable impatient mole with a Scottish accent, Q the debonair tea drinking robot, and Rexus an oddball old man who struggles with his sexuality. No, I'm not making that up. What the f are you doing? Wait, wait! Give me another chance! It's been a long time since I kissed a man! I can do better! So the crew comes to Rexus, who can unlock the Book of Rules power, but they're followed by the King's men, and Rexus tries to outsmart the soldiers. His plan is foolproof. I'll handle this. They won't recognize me at all. I could be wrong here, but I'd say only one of us looks like an old blind man. I have my glass eyes. They'll never know that Rexus and I are one in the same. We are here for the blind man, Rexus. Step forward now, and we will spare the rest of you. His eyes. There's something strange about them. Oh. Old man! If you can see so well, go and fetch me that glass of water from the table. <laughs> oh, the daft bastard! Your water, sir! Oh, these animations, man. Your water, sir! If you don't laugh at least once in the first five minutes, I'd be shocked. Based on a true story, and you can tell, if there's one thing Armed and Dangerous does right, it's the comedy. And kills the lion hearts! Yeah, two birds fit one stone! Are you a moron? They're people, not birds! At first glance, it seems like a standard third-person shooter, and while it is, there are some things Armed and Dangerous does that makes it really unique. You start with a simple rifle, but within a few minutes you arrive at a pub, and it's here that you get the greatest machine gun in video game history. This thing comes with a whopping 100 round clip, and it cuts down enemies like a samurai. So there you are, running along, shooting guys, and then all of a sudden you decide to use this thing and... <laughs> Have you ever seen a piece of equipment in a game that turns the goddamn screen upside down? Now, I want to make it clear, Armed and Dangerous has several flaws. One of the biggest, I'd say, is the cutscenes in gameplay aren't even logically strung together. Missions will just abruptly end with a box of text telling you what is happening. Here's the old man tied up, then it says, Rexus owes you his life. Great, but the next scene shows him unconscious. Normally I'd be way more critical of this, but what happens next makes me forget all about it. He's freezing. We gotta warm him up or he'll die. No problem. Here's a little trick I learned back in Kalios during the Lime Dixon War. Oh, good idea, mate. What? I've seen this done before. He'll split open the dead beast's stomach. No, he's not gonna. And stick Rexus amongst the warm entrails. Should keep him warm for at least a day. Right. I'll be off here vomiting. No, that's not necessary. Just stick it in there. What? Who oh, works better when they're dead? Oh my god. How did they come up with this? The second level is when things start to heat up. Virtually everything is destructible to a point of absurdity. Blowing up bunkers will launch their roof into the sky. Enemies are constantly screaming and yelling in pain. This is a true run and gun adventure that'll get your heart pumping. There's some crazy shit that happens in this game. When you're shooting people or penguins, and yes you can kill penguins and sheep, but sometimes when you kill them they'll fly like 8,000 feet in the air to your direct location. Was this a glitch? I've never seen anything like this before. It's not just the story and cutscenes, the entire game is trying to be as insane as possible. Check this out, you got these missions where you have to escort peasants to their home, and look at the way that they follow you. <laughs> they're just, they're just floating rag dolls. <laughs> The developers were just totally fucking around. There's no way anybody at Planet Moon Studios took this seriously. All right, Act Man, that's gotta be it. How much more silly could Armed and Dangerous possibly get? My dear friend, allow me the pleasure of introducing you to the greatest video game weapon of all time. Before Sharknado, 
there was the shark gun. If you aren't at the very least entertained at this point, then you might be completely sane. Now before I go any further, I want to make everyone very aware of some of the problems this game has. Armed and Dangerous is very unforgiving. If you die, restart the whole level, unless you went into a pub. Also, the bosses can mix things up a bit, but if you aren't stocked up on the right kind of ammo, you are blocked from progressing. Additionally, the actual mission objectives are way too simple. It's either get to the very end, destroy bullseye houses, or rescue peasants. In a game that has no rules, I really think they could have come up with something better. But back to the story. The Lionhearts are once again held at gunpoint by Forge's men, and Rexus uses his Jedi mind trick to try and escape. Show me your papers, now! You don't need to see our papers. We, we don't, don't need, need to, to see, see your, papers. your papers. Good. Uh, you're, um... We, um... Um... Uh, uh, quick! What should I say to them? I'm running out of power! Quick! What, what should he say to us? He's, he's running, running out, out of power. power. Tell them they're both teapots. No Scottish miners! Look, just tell them we're not the ones they're looking for. Wait, wait! I can handle this. Um, uh, you're both... Uh, French! We surrender! Now the next mission, you're on a turret and hordes of troops try to storm the castle walls. It's crazy simple fun at its best. And you see the army in the background? You can even launch missiles at them and watch them fly around like ragdolls. And in these defense missions, you're defending a village, but you can just turn around and fucking blast their buildings and see all the peasants' bodies fly over the wall. And there's no consequence. So we meet King Forge, and it seems his torturers aren't having any luck extracting info. Has the peasant spoken yet? <sighs> Not yet, sire. What torture have you performed on him? Well, all right. We started off by removing that guy's tongue, right? But he still hasn't said a word. And what's going on with the other one? Okay, so that guy, we took off his head, and we replaced it with this large cauliflower that Bruno had, but he hasn't spoken either. A couple more hours should probably do it. He's new. So he goes to talk to his son, Prince Stig, about his destiny and their plans. You'll be a great leader one day, my son. Are these your pills? Pills here! You're only supposed to take one a day, not the entire bottle. Anyway, yes, yes indeed, you'll be a great leader. For it was so ordained 25 years ago when the Knights of Lodor, upon arriving at the great Oracle of Jorfi, saw the great Kinderwook spirit one early morning announcing your coming. Aren't you glad you clicked on this video? Okay, so you probably think Stig is an idiot just for comedy, but... If you turn to page four of the manual, it'll tell you that... So, our heroes make their way to the Midden Mountains on their path to find the lady in the pond. But in order to get through the mountains, they need the help of this sad man. Uh who begs them to rescue the sacred lamb. You don't happen to know a way around this landslide, do you? Oh, please, save him. Bring back my sacred lamb of Midden. Just bring back the sacred lamb and remove this pall of depression we have all lived with for so long. Winker. You may not like it, but this is what peak male performance looks like. So we make our way through the mountains, trying not to die and Please, God, give me a health pack. Oh, fuck. Eventually, the Lionhearts reach the Sacred Lamb, and Jones is defusing the bomb when- We'll have you out of there and no- Duck! Oh, uh. Expert, touch Jones. <laughs> Oi, stop laughing. <laughs> Out of ideas, the Lionhearts disguise Rexus as the Sacred Lamb. Ready, Rexus? Yes. Nice and comfortable here, actually. Rome, you're a sick man. Oh! Oh! <gasps> oh! Is, is my little lambkins all right? All right, so I want to point out just how many mistakes were made in the cutscenes. 
Like, how almost every villager has the exact same face with the god-awful teeth? Or how the character's shadows stop moving right here? The voices cut out here before the robot is finished speaking? Why? Yes, keep back! In this scene, the characters are clearly just walking in place. But I think that's part of what makes the story so entertaining. It's got great writing with phenomenal voice acting, but awful presentation. It all blends together for an incredibly unique dose of comedy. Just watch him, okay? What about you? Remember the old adage, attack when they're least expecting it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna do that. And then we meet Elvis. Yeah, there's a lot of twists and turns here. He prophesizes that the Lionhearts are meant to go to the sacred land of Jerosa to decide the fate of everyone. Along the way, the group meets Lily, a girl who is also part of the prophecy. Ford sends his armies to Dick Turpin Village, where our heroes currently are. Today's battle will be a great one, and if you are to die on the battlefield, your memory will live on. Okay, that's it. What the bloody hell are you on about? What battle? Why, the King's forces. They're preparing to sack our village. When are they supposed to be here? Dawn. You like how any sense of tension and drama is cut short immediately by a penguin screaming like a chicken? So the Lionhearts need to plan their defense. A lady suggests... Excuse me, sir. We do have the Shrub Patrol. There's a village gardening robots. We are here to serve you, sir. Okay. Look, the enemy's approaching. What do you suggest? Uh, uh, yes, 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 yes. We can plant a hedgerow. Ah, uh, hedgerow? Yes, with some myrtle and maybe a row of geraniums. Well, that's not gonna work, so Rome suggests Rexus do something. He fiddles around and then... We're not programmed for that kind of... Okay, soldiers, let's move out! Uh, good. You defend the... I'm sorry, civilian, I can't talk now. We have a crisis here. They become a group of deadly soldiers. The Shrub Patrol. I love these guys. We get another defense mission after this, more difficult than the last, and then we get a new tool. Henry would like you to have this. He made it when he was a young man. About 14 million years ago. This is also the best jetpack in any game I've played. You can jump 80 stories in the air in an instant and control your descent with the A button. You also get the Vindaloo launcher, which locks onto literally anything and destroys it. This is where the game gets really fun. It's so satisfying flying hundreds of feet in the air, raining bullets down as tons of bad guys run around shooting at you. And I thought I'd mention, Armed and Dangerous is a brisk 3-4 to four hour game, with 1 hour being strictly cutscenes. At the very least, the game knows how long it should be. The gang meets up with the Shrub Patrol in the trenches, and the parody levels are off the charts. Heads up man, we got trouble! But oh no! A lone child sits on the battlefield crying. Sorry. Don't worry, the Shrub Patrol is here, and they... Keep away from that flower, civilian! Get it! <laughs> what the... Oh, bloody... Cover me! <laughs> Can I just say, I love the bagpipes in this. So most of the humor does land in the game, but some moments are kind of cringe. I think why it works so well is because it's clever. The jokes are fast, numerous, and the humor is never forced. No, oh, at this angle it'll get more sun. Yes, but the ground has more moisture over here. This is a war we're going to win. Death to the Saladators. Ha -ha! Death to, to the, the Saladators! Right, right, point taken. Armed and Dangerous does a great job of subverting expectations. Sorry, Ryan Johnson. For example, when the Lionhearts arrive to meet the Lady of the Pond, it's a moment that is part of the prophecy. Well, what, no? Patience! She will appear when she's ready. What does that mean? When she's had her hair done? After the gills have been waxed? You expect some kind of huge revelation or important exposition. Maybe the story will start to get a little serious and nope. Jonesy! What? Well, what, did, what did he just do? Well, Rex, put it this way. Your beloved Lady of the Pond is now lying face down in the water with some major head trauma. It was a bleeding accident! Well, get her out! Hello, nice to meet you. What? We're here for the, um, Greek keys of, uh... You? You for a rocket, me? No, I didn't. 
You tripped as you were coming out of the pond. I Pond? What was I doing in the pond? Why, you live there. You are Zembeline, the great lady of the pond. Ha! What a bunch of rubbish. Now go and play your pathetic D&D games elsewhere. He's been in that pond for over 2,000 years. Jonesy, you idiot! Well, then she should at least know how to dodge skipping rocks. You see, unlike most stories in video games, Armed and Dangerous is made with the sole intent of making you laugh. Our heroes make it just outside the Wildwood Abbey, where the Book of Rule resides. And here, things get a little emotional. Here, Rexus. I never really thanked you for getting us into this wood. I want you to have this. It's a wrist locator. Activate it, and I'll be able to find you wherever you are. Gosh, uh... I've never been given anything like this before. Well, you know, it's just in case. Thanks, Romy. Well, it doesn't mean we're engaged or anything. Actually, it does. What? It does mean you're engaged. In the small print of the Early Doors Wrist Locator Handbook, it says that if you give a set to another person you are from that moment Don't on... let me look at that. <laughs> ...that you are engaged. <laughs> right, give it back. But you gave it to... Give me the bloody thing now! No, no, give me. Right. Now, Q, throw me over that wall. Anyways, they come to Zitwala, a village filled with lepers, and. Lisa, can you kick this ball with me? All my brothers and sisters are no longer with us. Sure, I can, lad. And you can call me Rome. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roman. I'll be goalie. Here I am. Okay, kick it, Mr. Roman. Go for the goal! No! <laughs> he just kicked that kid's head off. So they find Lily, who reads the book, which says they need to take her to Jerosa. So we have to take her to Jerosa? And Jimsy said unto the others, So we have to take her to Jerosa? For he was rather dim-witted, and didn't quite understand what everyone else had already deduced. What? Basta! And Jimsy spewed profanities at the book. Such were the size of his tiny testicles. <laughs> They should call it the Book of Truth. <laughs> <laughs> so at last, we arrive at the game's final mission, One Last Defense. And it is epic. Even the Shrub Patrol flies in to assist us. And after we repel the invaders, after a long journey, Lily reads from the book and unleashes its power to restore the land and defeat the king's men. Rome gives a little speech. That was pretty bloody incredible. You okay? I think so. But sometimes, fate does hand you the right cards. Sometimes things do go well for the downtrodden. And sometimes a band of misfits can pull off the perfect ice, conquer an entire king's army and truly gain the love and respect of the people. Although this last one is pretty bloody rare. At the end of it all, I'm honestly so thankful that Armed and Dangerous exists, and I was lucky enough to know about it as a kid. It has one of the most unique and entertaining stories the video game industry has to offer. Whether or not it's a good or bad thing, I'll leave that to you. I guarantee you have not played anything like this. Sure, Armed and Dangerous may have terrible animation, yeah, it's pretty sure, and the gameplay is decent at best. But its cast of characters, story, and humor resonate so strongly with me. What really gets to me is how strong of a connection I feel with the Lionhearts in such a short amount of time. I mean, these guys are classic. Their chemistry is invigorating, and don't even get me started on the Shrub Patrol. If they're beating Armed and Dangerous, I can't help but feel how amazing this concept and idea would be as a movie, or if it got a spiritual successor. Someone should revive these characters, the setting and comedy that is so timeless, but refine it in a way that is more presentable. There's just something magical about it. I want to see more stories, adventures, and comedy from the Lionhearts. As silly as it sounds, I hope I'm able to bring more joy and laughter in the world by telling people about this game. For the last 15 years, every time I thought of Armed and Dangerous, I would ask myself two questions. How does this game exist, and why do so few people know about it? At the very least, I hope some of you check the game out. Breathe some life into this forgotten gem, because it truly is the funniest game nobody ever played. Uh.
Then they sang, Save the last pint for me, boys. Save the last pint for me. I'll be home with a book of rules, so you save the last pint for me. Save the last pint for me, boys. Save the last pint for me. I'll be home with a book of rules, so you save the last pint. Oh, save the last pint. You just